Your little choices become habits that affect the bigger decisions you make in life. Elizabeth George, let one of those little choices be spending 10 to 15 minutes each and every day in the market following the charts. It is extremely important and it will lead to what? To you becoming a market master. How far in time will it take? I can't tell you that. I can't read the future for you except to tell you that when you do master the charts, you'll make up for all the time you ever spent. So stick with it. Stay tuned and work hard. It's just 10 to 15 minutes, and I love every minute in the market. Let's jump into these charts. We see stocks and bonds are down. Gold and Bitcoin are up for the day. We're still short everything but gold. Now, let's jump into the S&P 500. Right now, it's a few minutes before the market closes. It's up down about 0.20% right now. We can see where over the last few days we've had the market just crushing down. Of course, we had <clears throat> a nice top with average volume, green spinning top, and then a red spinning top last week, and then moving down this week. Now, we've hit the same point here over the last two days right now. Well, we went a little bit lower this afternoon, and we'll see by the time the day ends, have we just been digesting those losses, getting ready to move down again? Or are we going to have an uptick at some point? Of course, we will have an uptick at some point, but I'm hoping that we'll have average volume by the end of the week or higher on that weekly chart and that things will keep crushing down. Why? Because, of course, we're in the inverse fund, SH. You might say, what is that? A single inverse fund? It's been going up as the S&P has been going down. And the way this is set up and the derivatives are used by the market makers, by the folks that, well, by the people that run SH, let me say that, uh, by ProShares. Their job every day is to have SH move in the opposite direction by the same percentage that the S&P 500 moves. That is opposite direction. So like the S&P was up for many, many, many weeks, well, SH was going down. And now that the S&P is going down, SH is going up. It's just another way with a little bit of sophistication, you can figure out how to make money when the markets are moving, when they're open, when things are happening. But you have to know how to read a chart, don't you? You need a little bit of knowledge and charting experience. Now, Let's move on. Well, let's finish up, though, with the S&P 500. We can, of course, see that uh, it is in its second week of down movement. Like I said, tomorrow we'll check out and see if we've made average volume. I was messing around, and I did not save. Let's go ahead and make sure to save that. I was messing around with the trend line earlier. As we look at the trend line on the NASDAQ 100, it's down about half a percent right now. And of course, we see these nice three down candles on the two-day chart. First day, the latest two-day candle, a little finish drawing tomorrow. And look, we're almost up to average volume as it is on the NASDAQ 100. And of course, it's been rocketing down quite nicely down in the morning, further down in the afternoon. So moving in the right direction. What's the inverse? This is, again, their other inverses, but PSQ is the single inverse. Now, there's a lot to know about inverses. We gave you that training a couple of days ago about them because they, they, are, they do have much higher expenses. They revalue on a daily basis, so they can magnify your losses if you don't know what you're doing. That's why we practice. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to practice with us. Don't be out there being foolish and throwing your money away. Now, let's move on to 20-year bonds. What do we see there? Well, we're going to the third week, and again, the candles are getting bigger every week, down 0.58% for the day, almost up to average volume this week. Uh, we do see a slowing down. Now, we saw this happen two candles. Uh, three candles ago, we saw it happen for two candles, and of course, we just have a small, we're not hitting the low of the prior two-day candle. That was the Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, but we have another day to go. Volume also is not up to about half of where it was before, but we'll keep an eye on things. We saw where basically we had on Wednesday morning and afternoon things moving up, indecision in the morning on Thursday, and then down Thursday afternoon. 
So again, we are still, of course, short on 20-year U.S. government bonds. And you might say, Tom, what's that one? Well, that's Tango, Bravo, Foxtrot, TBF is the ProShares single short. And of course, it has been going up quite nicely over the last going into almost three weeks now as TLT has been going down. Now, gold, we don't have a short fund for you, nor would you need it because gold is one of the bright spots. Now, we're not reaching the high yet of last week. We're still well above the weekly trend line on the two-day and the half-day. Yesterday was a down day for gold. This day, up half a percent right now. We'd like to get back up to that nice super high of last week. Haven't gotten there yet. Nonetheless, we are still long gold, and of course, we are watching it. Lastly, we'll go to HODL. That is the Bitcoin ETF managed by Vanek. And what do we see going on there? Big red down week. 24-hour a day Bitcoin chart shows us a red spinning top last week and a down week this week going to a bit of a lower low. But again, as we look at HODL, I'm hoping we'll finish this week of down movement and then we'll go back into another week or two or three or more of down movement, sort of resetting things so that when Bitcoin does get ready to move up again, we can find a good jumping in place for those of you who didn't jump into it and ride it up on this last crazy ride from somewhere around, let's see if we go back to February, the week of February the 5th, somewhere around a low of $47.87 to a high of $83.36 you would have come close to, you know, doubling your money there on your practice trade. So again, not bad, but you have to see it coming. And we're all about seeing it coming by practice trading, by understanding, by having an understanding of the individual personalities, of the ETFs and stocks that we watch. By the way, Patreon members, we will be sending out to you this afternoon. It's already loaded up at the Patreon page the charting cryptos, commodities, and currencies, and the three-wave trades will also be sending you the weekly vertical crossovers. There aren't many going up. Most are going down. I've already been working on that, and we'll get that out to you also. Again, we strive every week to give our Patreon members 20 weekly vertical crossovers. Now, I know there are services that sell those things, very expensive subscriptions, of course, you can join as a Patreon member for as little as $30 a month, a dollar a day. And you get our weekly vertical crossovers each and every week. These are S&P 500 stocks going from red to green, green to red. On that weekly chart, we go through, curate those for you, give you some to practice trade. We're looking at both the crossovers and the volume and what's gone on in the past. Of course, you need to then take those, analyze them, pick out two or three that you might practice trade, and again, continue to hone your skills. Maybe you'll throw one or two of those into your quiver, and you'll add to the stocks and ETFs that you track each and every week. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.